Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what's popping up in theaters on December 2nd. <laughs> Natalie Portman stars as Jackie Kennedy in Jackie, the next entry in this year's Oscar Derby. And I gotta say right up front that I think Jackie has a very good shot at some of the technical awards. You know, costume design, art direction, maybe cinematography. This thing looks great. If you've seen the trailer, you know there is a haunting beauty to Jackie with perfectly composed shots that capture the settings and impeccably dressed characters in shocking detail. And if you've seen the trailer, you've also seen the best version of this movie. Meaning the film creates certain indelible images, but sadly, not very much else. For a movie that pays so much attention to detail, Jackie feels largely shallow. In fact, the film hardly even feels like a narrative motion picture, and feels more like something pretentious arty types would call a tone poem, like Terence Malick's Tree of Life, but with a much more limited scope. And when I say limited scope, I mean very limited. Jackie, like Steve Jobs or Lincoln before it, is another film that is named for a major historical figure that intentionally limits its scope to just one period in that person's life, rather than tell the whole cradle-to-grave saga. The difference is, those other pictures chose time periods when those figures were most uniquely themselves, and as a result they painted a pretty solid picture of who those people were overall. Jackie chooses to portray Jackie Kennedy during the one week after her husband's assassination, when she was in alternating turns, dazed, withdrawn, intoxicated, smoking, or crying, and often several of those things simultaneously. As a result, for the most part, we don't get a sense of who Jackie Kennedy was. We just see what she looked like. We see what Bobby Kennedy looked like, what the Johnson administration looked like as it moved into the White House, as characters sort of drift in and out of rooms in a sort of fugue state as this piercing, cello-driven score drowns out much of the dialogue and bellows a very unique kind of dread into every scene. We get to witness what that whole period really looked and felt like. And that's really the only selling point of Jackie. It's seemingly faithful, painstakingly realistic recreation of moments in time, from the swearing in of Lyndon Johnson aboard Air Force One to the funeral procession of John F. Kennedy. Some of these moments we already know well. Others, like the moment when Jackie finally removes all of the clothes she actually wore during the assassination and washes her husband's blood out of her hair. Those are moments we've actually never seen before and won't be likely to forget. The best example of how this movie luxuriates in the details is a scene in which Jackie Kennedy puts on the Broadway cast album of Camelot and listens to the entire title song as she switches from one sumptuous room, from one fabulous outfit, to another, gliding through the empty residence, smoking, drinking, and just sort of meandering throughout the entire song, just about. Nothing actually happens, the plot doesn't move forward, and it just sort of sums up a movie that shows you a lot, but tells you absolutely nothing. This movie, that comes in a tick over 90 minutes, feels twice as long due to this languid pace, this focus on creating images rather than insights. The problem is, after all is said and done, all we're left with is those images. There's no real story, there's no real narrative, there's no real scenes in this movie's first two thirds, just a bunch of nervous or shell-shocked people walking into and out of rooms, having hushed conversations that never really have an end point, over an increasingly jarring and obnoxious score. Natalie Portman only once even gets her voice above a sort of breathy purr, and that's late in the film as she's yelling at Bobby Kennedy over funeral arrangements. In the scenes, oh, okay, 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 okay. I won't even call them scenes. In the shots of the film that take place prior to the assassination, she comes off as sort of a vacuous spokesmodel concerned only with style, her renovation of the White House, her appearance on a TV special, and the importance of historical furniture is given way more screen time than you would imagine is necessary. S seriously, furniture and fashion and, and funeral arrangements? Why in the heck is so much screen time given to the discussion of furniture? Seriously! Look, this movie was awfully pretty to look at, but as narratively and thematically empty as the bag of popcorn grade that I must award it. It transports us very effectively to a very particular place and time, but then does nothing to give us any new insight into the historical events and people depicted once it's taken us there. 
It's simply a, a tour, a, a montage, a mood piece. And you just end up feeling about the film how it seems the film wants you to feel about Jackie Kennedy. That it's pretty, but largely superficial. And concerned more with preserving a carefully curated image for posterity than making any effort to connect on a human level. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more. And don't forget to support us by clicking subscribe while you're there, and by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on Jackie in the comments as well. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel, and quite simply, there is not a more congenial spot for a happy ever after ring than here in Camelot. Camelot, Camelot, I know it sounds a bit bizarre.